Hello everyone. Welcome to Gardening with Brother Nature here at Evergreen Brickworks. I'm Brother Nature. I'm the lead hand in urban agric agriculture. Today we are out in one of the plant positivity gardens called the Thrive Garden. And what I'm going to show to you or talk to, to you about is how I prepare the beds here at Evergreen Brickworks. So the first thing I will do is I'll go walk around the beds and I'll look for any weeds. What people call weeds, I call plants behaving badly. Because most plants, most weeds I should say, have some sort of edible and medicinal value. So today we're going to look at a few of them. We're going to look at the lowly and lovely dandelion. So the dandelion, you know, with the nice yellow head, is part of the sunflower family. It is one of the first foods for the bees when they, they come out of hibernation. So you might want to keep them going in your garden for a little bit longer. But also dandelion has uses as the greens are used before the, the heads pop up. People used eat dandelion dandelion frittata, so deep fried dandelions. They also do make wine out of dandelions as well. Within First Nations cultures, the, the white sap that comes out of the dandelion is used for, to remove warts. Another plant is going to be stinging nettle. You can see it down here. All right, so stinging nettle, ooh, stinging nettle. It hurts to touch, but stinging nettle has a lot of uses as well. Did you know that stinging nettle can be eaten as greens? It can be made into a tea. It's really great for a hair tonic. Help people with their hair, keep their hair from falling out. Many, many uses for it. Also in my garden, there's also one, rare, one invasive species, I should say. This one right here. If you can see it. All right, so that's garlic mustard. And you want to get that out of your out of your garden. So what we do here at Evergreen Brickworks is that we'll use the leaves and the stems of the garlic mustard and part of our vermicomposting program here on site. Another one I look for is burdock. So if you look at burdock with the big leaves like here, it has a very, very big tap root. So you want to dig down deep to get that out of there if you want to get, get rid of it. But also has medicinal uses as well. Part of the root for tonics, um, the leaves are used as poultices, as natural band-aids. So there's a lot of plants out here that we call weeds that are actually plants behaving badly. They're not villains, they have uses for us. So next we're gonna stop and we'll look at one, the ones inside the greenhouse. All right, my friends, we're now back inside the greenhouse. So we're gonna look, look at other plants that you'll see in your garden. That I, I will see here at, every, at, at Evergreen Brickworks Garden that we think are weeds. They're actually plants behaving badly. So this one right here, show you where it's at, right here, you'll see something like this, which is called lamb's quarters. It's actually edible. You'll see one down here, this one right here. This is called goose foot, another edible ancient green, green or grain. You'll also see one that looks like this, called lands quarters. So you'll see all these ones inside your inside your garden beds. I'll see them here at Evergreen Brickworks. What I will do is here at Evergreen Brickworks, I will use them in my in my vermicomposting program. I have heard of other people who in their own backyards will actually use those greens as part of their part of their health their healthy diets. So what I'm saying is that hey, in your own backyard It'd be perfectly safe to pick these wild greens or these weeds because you know where they are. But out in public, in public lands and parks, I would suggest do not pick them out there. Let them grow nice and wild because just like dandelions, the bees need them. So this, these are a few things I look for, I look for in, my, in the garden beds here at Evergreen Brickworks before, before I start planting. Um, just get everything ready for the, the corn, the sunflowers, and the amaranth I have growing in there. So now I'm gonna take um, answer a few questions. Because in my in my journeys, I get a lot of questions about how to take care of certain plants, how to take care of how to take, take care of pepper plants. Is it too early for pepper plants? Well, yes, as it is right now, it's too early for pepper plants. Pepper plants needs, need warmer weather, hotter weather. Right now it's too cold. So I would wait for my pepper plants until about end of May, beginning of June, depending on where you are. 
Um, also on that note, look at hardening off your pepper plants or hardening off any of your plants. Your cool weather plants, your lettuces, your brassicas, um, your peas can be hardened off now, which means putting them outside in shade for about an hour to two every single day. And after, after a week, you can put them outside or leave them, uh, after a week, actually, actually leave them outside overnight. Then after that, plant them outside. Your warm weather crops like tomatoes, watermelons, any of your melons, your squashes, your gourds, your beans, your corn, they need warmer weather. If you plant them outside right now, they have a, they most likely will not survive unless you cover them or have a cold frame. I also get, I get uh, questions about, about companion planting, like spinach and lettuce. Spinach and lettuce can go, to, go great together. Um, you can plant them next to eggplants, to leeks. They love being around carrots. Just don't plant them near potatoes. Potatoes do not like, they don't like spinach, don't like lettuce. They don't, they don't work well together. Um, I had a question about powdery mildew. Are powdery mildew are a fungus on your rosemary? Yeah, that's powdery mildew. So what I would do with powdery mildew when I see it on the grounds here or inside the, the greenhouse, I would do one tablespoon of baking soda to one to one or 1.5 liters of water in a spray container and I'll shake it up, put it in a spray container and spray my plants and spray the soil. Make sure you spray everything and get up underneath the, the leaves as well. If you're, if the rosemary is too infected, I'll cut off the little branch that's on and propagate the rosemary and start all over again. I also get plant questions about flowering shrubs. For me, the most beautiful flowering shrub is either a spirea or a smoke bush. They look beautiful together. All right, my friends. Thank you very much for taking this time to listen to Gardening with Brother Nature as we begin to tell you about the, the, the grounds here at Evergreen Brickworks and how we take care of them. Tune in next week, next Wednesday, for another edition of Gardening with the Brother Nature. And as I always say, be nature. Take care, my friends. Bye for now.